All right, so you might be noticing uh, this is the exact same shot as the last vlog I did. Uh, that's because I actually went through three episodes the past few days. I just didn't have time to film them. So next episode, I'm probably going to be wearing this too. It'll be the exact same shot. So I know you're heartbroken. Uh, and I'll also warn you, I cannot say this guy's name. It's the guy, and I know I'm terrible at names. I, it's like a running thing through these, but Rene... I would do Ro Odo from D Space Nine. I, I'm mentioning that name because I really like him as a voice actor. I like him as a, a regular actor too. Uh, the voice actors aren't regular actors, but you know what I mean—a live-action actor. And he always does good work, but I don't mention him because I can't say his fucking name. I always just call him Odo from Star Trek. So apologies uh, if you're watching. Very unlikely, but um, with that said, this episode is the Northern Air Temple, right? Yes, the Northern Air Temple. I like this one a lot. What I like about it is that it tackles an argument that is still going on today in many respects and is still a very difficult balance. And, and what I, I mean in this one, this is the one where Aang goes to, they, they find the Northern Air Temple. There's another uh, air temple, he shocked uh, here. And there's also more airbenders, which sounds phenomenal. They go to this temple and it turns out it's just people who are really good at engineering devices that make it look like they're flying, like hang gliders and, and little planes and so forth, balloons, uh, so on and so forth. And he's disappointed, but at the same time, well, it's good to see the temple again. But the big problem is that the temple has been taken over. Many parts have been ripped apart to make way for new technology, to make way for them to create other means of survival and evolving and technological marvels, but it's destroying a place that's a very sacred, it's very sacred ground. So Aang comes in, it's like going to a place that, it's like going to your old childhood home and seeing all of this incredible artwork that you did, or maybe your folks did, or something that uh, you cherished and there's big pipes coming through them like through their faces if you drew faces or whatever I mean just this incredible artwork and the stuff that to him is very sacred uh, very much altered taken down ripped apart Not for the means of demeaning the artwork or, or going against anything sacred But because the people going in here, they don't know what it is. They just know, hey, we can use this room to make our machines, and we can use this room to handle our plumbing, and we can, you know, we can survive here. So that was very interesting, and Aang is looking at this temple, just shaking his head like, this was a sacred place. But he's also dealing with the idea, well, but these people need to survive, and they are doing good. Well, for the most part, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Um... And they are very much trying to develop things that will be good, and, and there's people trying to live their lives, and, and trying to live good lives. You know, there's there's a kid who uh, he can't use his legs, but they create a glider where he can fly through the skies. It's like that's unbelievable. Um, and, and the the inventor Rene Odo from Deep Space Nine is the guy who makes most of this stuff. And he's a very nice guy, and, and he's eccentric, and he likes to work with different inventions. He sort of talks with Sokka about different ways of, like, uh, finding a gas leak. And I, I like the ingenuity of this. I like how they, they work off each other. Um, I, I like, Sokka's really been given much more of a character, which I like. Or, yeah, honestly, it was always kind of there. I'm not going to act like it wasn't. It was more that the humor was a touch off. But they've always given him sort of this nice honorable part to him in between all the humor but now it really it seems more and more like he's very well balanced before the humor was a little off it, it seems very well balanced now like i really genuinely like this character i never disliked him but i now really like him uh just as much as uh katara and ang so they get to they get to this place and they find out that uh odo from deep space nine is actually making weapons for the Fire Nation, which is like, wah! But it turns out that he sort of had no choice. If they wanted to live there, if they wanted to live in peace, the Fire Nation, Fire Nation would need him to keep making weapons. So Aang finds us out. Here's the explanation. The, the son of Odo from Star Trek is crushed, and they try to figure out a way 
around this, which I like. It, it would have been, it probably would have been easy just to make the uncle a bad guy, but they, they made him too likable. They made him want to change over, and now he can't balance it anymore. He has to pick a side, especially with the airbender being here now, the last airbender. So they have this... They use all their ingenuity. They have this really nice battle. This is like a Lord of the Rings style battle. It's so creative. You got these people climbing up uh, the the mountain to get to this temple, and you got them throwing things down, and, and, and gliders going. You have these awesome machines that hook up their chains to the top, and they have these wheels. They're like tanks riding the side of the mountain. Wonderful. Very inventive. And what happens is that he uses this new machine, uh, which is pretty much a hot air balloon, uh, which Sokka figures out how to control. And I really like that. Good, good science for the kids, too. I, I like how he explains how we're going to do it. Uh, I, I like that ingenuity because that encourages other kids to think outside the box, use their, use their ingenuity. And... I, I always see the same thing with Miyazaki. I like it when he shows how things work. Uh, and I think that's a good way to get kids into that. And for adults, it, it's just great uh, uh, seeing how they put it together, too. Or maybe adults can get into it. Who knows? We're not that old. So what we have is this big battle going on, and they, they finally win. They, they, they cast the the people down, the, the Fire Nation. It looks like it's all great. And it has this wonderful ending where... The Fire Nation has the hot air balloon. They say, we may have lost this battle, but we have gained something really great from it. They now have a new weapon, these balloons, because that was always the thing the Fire Nation could never get in the sky. They could never conquer flight, and now they can, and that's a great dot, dot, dot. That's a great, holy shit, this is bad <laughs> kind of thing, because now it's like nothing is going to be safe. So that, that, was a really good, uh, that was a good area to leave it off of. The one thing I did sort of question about this, and I don't know if it's intentional or not, is that there's one room they couldn't get into, and that's where the uncle, I guess the uncle or the father, I'm sorry, uh, but is making these weapons. And they say only an airbender can open it. Now, Aang opens it, but how did they get in before? Um, oh, you know what, there might have been that secret entrance there, because there's one of the Fire Nation guys come up that way or something, maybe that's it, but... Uh, That'd be interesting if they're building that up for something, like maybe there is another Airbender, who knows. Um, but what I really enjoy about this episode is that this is always a really good debate about how close do you hold tradition. And a lot of things that Hollywood likes to do, and I'm not entirely against it, but they really like to show tradition... It's just tradition. Come on, move on. It's You're getting stuck with your traditions. I mean, this is the very you know, screw religion side of Hollywood. That, that Don't act like it's not there. Um, but, you know, they're very much, you know, hey, you want to just keep chanting stuff and, and live in the past and stuff. Hey, come on, come on, move forward, help people now and stuff like that. And they're, they're not necessarily wrong. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with moving forward, leaving the past in the past, but there is something to be said that there were there are great marvels that are made. It's sort of like demolishing the pyramids to make room for uh, houses or something like that in, in Egypt. You know, well, on the one hand, yeah, you're making houses for people, and that's great, but it's the fucking pyramids. So I, I like how this is a good debate, and I like Aang really struggling with this. And you can identify with it very quickly. In something like Fiddler on the Roof, you, you just know where you know who they're gonna side with they're not even though they try to show the traditions they try to show uh how much it means to him it, it's still you know they're gonna go with the revolutionary you know they're gonna go with the new ways they know they're gonna go with uh you know the young people essentially being right you know even though everything doesn't everything doesn't go their way you know that the younger people and the people breaking the tradition are the ones who are more in the right. I like this is a little bit more you're not sure. I like that they keep it, uh, questioning it a little bit more. And, and at the end, they do sort of say it's, you know, they have a good heart, they have a good spirit, and they're doing this for the right reason, so it's all right. But at the same time, they are, uh, that image of the painting of the monks and that pipe coming through one of the faces on the page, I, I thought that was such a strong image. That is a very strong image. Um, and, and tradition, 
I hate talking this way because I'm usually not a big traditional, you know, prison for tradition, but it does have a place. Uh, it is important to remember the past. It is important to look back at the past, see what we've done, how far we've come, uh, the patterns that will come back the good of it, the bad of it, it's, you know, films. I mean, if we saw a movie once and then never again, you know, if we didn't have DVD or they didn't re-release or anything, I mean, we wouldn't be able to learn as much from it. We wouldn't be able to study them and look at them or great works of art. So I really respect the fact that they try to get that balance out there and they try to really question it and don't play to both sides, but obviously you're leaning towards this side. I, I thought it was a real good dilemma. Uh, and it was a, it was a good struggle he was having. So uh, I, I I enjoyed this one immensely because that's that's a tough argument even for adults. I mean, let alone to have in a uh, a kid show. And I thought they the way they came to the resolution at the end was a good mix. I thought that was a very good resolution. It's a very good way of showing you with the little crab, uh, the little hermit crab animals or whatever those were. Uh, so I enjoyed this one immensely. I thought this was a very, very good one. I mean, it doesn't, does it tie directly into the story? Not much. You know, they, they get a balloon, uh, the Fire Nation, but it, it doesn't matter. The filler episodes are fine if they do them very well. I thought this one was done very well and showed us a new place and new people and uh, I, I enjoyed it immensely. So, um, that's this episode. See you in the next one.